The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 424. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap-Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She's a American writer who mainly writes multicultural fiction, and I'm just really excited to have her on to share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Jennifer Chow. Jennifer, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, I'm good. Thanks, Sheena. Thanks for having me. I am an Asian American writer, so I mainly write multicultural fiction. It usually has some sort of intergenerational drama in it. And I have some short fiction published in different magazines like Hyphen Magazine, Yay LA Magazine. I have three novels out currently. They're all Asian American themed. There's a young adult called Dragonfly Dreams and then a women's fiction title. It's called The 228 Legacy and a mystery called Seniors Sleuth. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Jennifer, what's your cultural background? I'm Chinese, Chinese American. My mom is from southern China in the Guangzhou region. My dad is actually from Malaysia. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote comes from a poem, actually. It's a poem that talks about just embracing yourself as a woman as you get older. It's by Jane Brown. The quote is, I am becoming full moons and sunrises. Thanks for sharing that. And that's a great quote, Um, especially, you know, being as a woman, we always feel like we're never enough or we're never full, always trying to, you know, keep on filling that cup when we realize we're more than enough and we can just go out there and be our true selves. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence has to do with really being fully aware of who you are. So for me, just being aware of who I am, how unique I am, and that means both my strengths and my weaknesses. It's about seeing the full picture of me and just embracing who I am the way I am. And I think there's also the sense of like delighting in myself and just relishing my identity and not being pushed around by other people's opinions of me. Thanks for sharing that. And that's a great definition that you mentioned. So thanks for sharing it again. And Jennifer, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Um, Well, I was definitely a people pleaser. So I'm really tied into people's thoughts about me, their opinions about me. I actually had a hard time making choices because I would sort of waffle depending on, you know, what a person thought. I would try to figure out what someone else thought before I made my choice. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we can all relate to, especially growing up, you know, in a Chinese culture, um, Asian culture, we're so we're so afraid of taking action because we're so afraid of what other people might think or we have to like, you know, check on other people's opinions before we even like think of making a decision. And it's like and it, it stops us from doing what we really want because we're so afraid of doing that. And, you know, what was that point in, in your life when you realized, you know, you can just go out there and do it regardless of other people's opinions? What was that aha moment? Mm-hmm. I think I actually had two aha moments. So one was when I was a teen and I was facing sort of the pressure you mentioned about just this kind of this um, growing up in a- um, the Asian or the Chinese culture of like needing to be almost perfect. And I think I felt that stress of I needed to be perfect. I had to be the perfect daughter and, you know, listen and do everything my parents said. And then I had to be the perfect sister and the perfect student. Right. And I think that I had to really reach that bottom where and realize that I couldn't be everything that was stressing me out too much and sort of get to the bottom where before I I realized, you know what, I'm not perfect. I did make mistakes, but it's still okay. You know, I can um, thrive through this and thrive. Uh, And then the second point, I feel like that was an aha moment was later on in my life. So my background actually is on um, geriatric social work. So I studied social work and I did that for a few years where I worked with older adults, but I really want to write. And growing up, I know that uh, my parents weren't, they weren't really supportive of that. 
right? Because growing up, especially with immigrant parents, they really wanted me to do something that was more stable. And so I, I went into social work, wanting to help people, but still feeling like I wanted to write. And I think the aha moment came to me when I, you know, I actually read this book about uh, breast cancer, young women who are dealing with breast cancer and sort of their goals for their lives and just feeling like, you know, I really need to pursue my dreams um, at this moment and not just kind of delay them. And so I ended up taking that step of, you know what, I'm going to switch. I want to be a writer. And sort of that was my aha moment to kind of regain confidence in myself and sort of my identity. Thanks for sharing those tips. And I love how you mentioned, you know, just talking about, you know, that being perfect, right? We're like you mentioned, like we've been taught to just be the perfect daughter, the perfect sister. And it, it really breaks us down, right? To the point where it's like, it's it's impossible, <laughs> you know? I think people forget that it's just impossible to be perfect. Like it's, there's no such thing. Um, there's progression and you get good at things, but you know, there's no such thing as being perfect. And I think when people forget, oh, remember that, They'll, they'll just start going out there doing whatever it takes to do what they want, do, do what they love, like what you did, you know, from social work to becoming a writer. And because of that, what's your life been like now? Oh, yeah, I was going to mention this part, too, but it's been uh, amazing as a writer because I feel like I'm more fulfilled, right? I feel like that part of me that wasn't there before it has come to completion. And so... I think now I'm feeling like a sense of freedom. I guess the way I compare it is, you know, when I was a kid, I remember going to department stores and they would have the music playing in the loudspeakers and I would be dancing in the aisles and, you know, dancing to the, the songs. Uh, and I do remember one day my dad saying, wait, you can't do that. You know, that, that's not mature and that's not kind of the way you should act. And I feel like kind of coming back to the writing is sort of reclaiming that childhood freedom, you know, the ability to dance in the aisles and be creative and be expressive. Thanks for sharing that. And Jennifer, if our listeners were tuning into your episode and they're in a similar journey to self-confidence, what would be that one tip you would give to them? Oh, I was going to say I have a couple tips, actually. So one is the fact that you're talking about it's a, it is a journey. It's a journey of self-confidence, right? It's like going step by step and just having that next step and that next progression you're talking about uh, and to not make it like, oh, I need to have this one pivotal, pivotal moment and then I'll be totally fine. But to be OK, that it is a journey. Um, and I think all of it is it's hinged on being OK with your your understanding that people are different. People are wonderful because they are different. And just like you would say that to somebody else, to say that to yourself as well, to be like, hey, you know, I'm unique and that makes me wonderful. And it's kind of amazing just to, to be able to have that out of perspective, to look at yourself in a different way, um, almost as if you were looking at a friend. Thanks for sharing those great tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your writing, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes, my author website is www.jenniferjchow.com. So everything is linked there, my books, my blog, and then I'm on social media, most active probably on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All of those, my handle is Jen J. Chow. So J-E-N-J-C-H-O-W. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Jennifer, you can also head on over to thetowofselfconfidence.com and search for Jennifer's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Jennifer today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Jennifer. Oh, you're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Thanks again. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Sign up for our free membership site to get more amazing resources for self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.